this is a little tutorial about how to do presets for your PDF export in InDesign. Um, I have this little document. It's a two pager. Um, it's a, a little uh, six panel brochure uh, demo that I made for GDT 30. Um, if you show all the uh, guides and whatnot. I have a little bit of a bleed. I have a slug with my folds right there. My font cover, which is, whoops, I might uh, change that right now. Front cover. Oh, but it's been outlined, so I cannot change that. So there's a typo right there. There you go. See, that happens to the best of us. And I have a blue and a red and a yellow from this uh, Olympic logo right there, Olympic promotional logo. Um, to switch it to CMYK quickly, I'm just going to go into the flyout menu right there and go into the ink manager and then make sure that all my spots have been converted to process. So you can see that there's a process um, icon beside the color. If not, these are spot colors. So I just want to make sure of that first. Um, and I want to go into my presets for my PDF exports. So I'm going to go into a file. There'll be PDF presets right there, and you can see that there's a few already in there in brackets that have been um, basically presets from uh, by default by the software. And I have one that I've already preset right there down there, which is a, a 150 DPI proof. So I'm going to go and define, and I'm going to create a new pro, a new preset. So everything happens in basically in this little window that we have right here. So I'm going to call it CMYK Press Ready. And I'm going to make it uh, so you have different standards right here. So you can go with uh, just a standard PDF X4, et cetera, uh, that pushes it to Acrobat 7. And things do turn on and off, right? So in this case, there's some uh, things that are grayed out that I cannot include. Um, if I go to, to PDF X1, again, there's a lot of things that are grayed out. So I personally would like to go to the very top one, the Acrobat 8, instead of one of the standards and I saw it going to Acrobat 8 and 9 compatibility and everything is available to me. So in this case, I want to make sure that I export all my pages and not in spreads because it's not a facing document. It's not a facing page document. I do not want to create separate PDFs for each page. The viewing of my PDF right here, once I open it up in Acrobat, I want to go into fit page, so it'll uh, show me the full page in my on my uh, monitor, and I want to go into single page continuous, so I can scroll up and down in my PDF. I don't want to go into two page facing cover, etc. Those are just again for multiple page document with with uh, you know a larger larger book, for example, where you have a cover. Um, I want to create Acrobat layers because again my document has a layers. As you can see earlier, it had my template, it had my artwork, it has you know a bunch of different things in layers, set up in layers. So I want to keep it like this as a PDF as well. And I don't need to have my bookmarks or my hyperlinks um, selected because it's not a document that I will post on the uh, on the web. If I had the hyperlinks selected, um, this uh, you know like this email right there, the, the you know and the fake uh, URL on this brochure would be interactive and you'd be able to click on it directly. I don't want that because it goes to it goes to press. Um, I don't want to have any you know, non-visible object, visible guides and grids. Don't need to have that turned on. This is just good for the the, the uh, purpose that I need. In compression, I want to make sure that this is in high resolution and 300 pixels per inch or 300 PPI. That's a press resolution. Um, compression by JPEG automatic. That's fine. Make sure your image quality is on maximum. Again, you're going to press. You're not. You don't want to compress your image and 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 uh, lower your image quality. Otherwise, it's going to look really crummy. Same thing with grayscale images at 300, etc. And then monochrome images such as a bitmap image it always goes to 1200, 1800. So keep those in there, pretty much the same. Now the next thing that is important are the marks and bleeds because you're sending that to print. So you could click on the um, on the all printers marks right there, and you have basically everything that printers like to have. Uh, it gets really busy, so you have your crop marks, your bleed marks, your registration marks, your color bars. So I'm going to turn one off. I'm just going to turn off my bleed marks because I don't really need my bleed marks. I want to have my crop marks where basically the uh, that will line up basically uh, with the edge of my document. Um, the bleed marks are not really necessary. I'm going to offset it um, to the exact same 
um, uh, measurements that I have for my bleed right here, which is 0.125 or an eighth of an inch. So I just use those little arrows, 0.125. So basically, my crop marks will start just outside of this uh, of this bleed area, basically, and it's not going to bite into it. I want to keep my page information. That's the name of my file, etc. And I will walk you through what you actually see here. I want to make sure that my I uh, use my document bleed settings. If you don't have it set up, you can set it up manually, right? Just by clicking on this, make sure that it's linked. But in this case, it's actually uh, preset already properly. And I want to include my slug area. My slug area has, um, you know, the fold, that little dotted line right there, the flap, black, black cover, my font cover. Oops. Um, so I want to include that for sure. Uh, for as far as output, um, I want to go to convert to destination, right? Uh, and then, uh, so you have no conversion, for example, no color conversion, so for example, so if you're um, printing something with a five color print, for example, you want to, you know, with a special Pantone. In my case, all my Pantones have been converted to CMYK, so I want to convert to destination. And I'm switching over to the standard working CMYK US web coded, that's a standard kind of press setting. The printer also um, can access uh, those settings in the PDF and uh, and change them if need be, depending on the equipment they have. Uh, don't include profiles. I don't bother with that. Advanced, I don't touch this. And then the summary basically shows you what we've just done. Basically, see the crop marks. You can see crop marks is on, the bleed marks are off, etc. Compression is all here. Everything that we've just done, color images at 300 PPI. Perfect compression automatic, et cetera, et cetera, image quality maximum. So this is kind of like a, you know, a little summary of, uh, of what we've done in the left hand side right here. So I'm going to click OK on that. And that's it. It's on my list right here. And I click done. So this is my PDF preset. So when I go into my file, ugh, go into my file right here and I go export. If I want to export just as a PDF right here, for in this case, I just want to, you know, I just want to call it test right there. I will get into my PDF presets right here, and I have again all those default ones installed in the software, and then there is my preset right here. So if I click on that, it switches back to what we've just done. It shows to my fit page, single page, Acrobat 8, 9, in layers compression, marks and bleeds, all that stuff is turned on. So this is my, my preset right here. So it's perfect. So I'm, I don't want to do it right now. I just want to cancel it because those presets are really, really important when you package your file. In this case, I'm going to do it just for demonstration purposes. Again, I'm going to go File, Package. And of course, it red flags a few images that I have in RGB and not in CMYK, bad boy. Do what I do, not what I do. What I do, not what I say, or vice versa. Do what I say, not what I do. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, this is just a demo um, file, of course. So that's why it's all in RGB. It's not in CMYK. It's just uh, it's just for you guys to understand how things function. Uh, but if it was an actual file to send to print, I would have converted those images to CMYK, so to four color process. Um, so again, so this is the summary of my package right there. It'll show you me. It'll show you guys. Um, It'll show me and you uh, the fonts that I'm using right here. So I'm using Blue Spirits Regular, which is uh, the type used for like Safari, CD of Love, and all that stuff. Gotham in various weights, and I'm using Zap Dinkbat, uh, which is for those tiny little icons, the telephone there, the little pen there. Um, and uh, it shows you also the list of uh, links and images. They're all linked. I don't have a missing link. Um, my colors and inks, of course, they're showing me four color process with the three Pantones. It doesn't matter they've been converted, but it's all in there. And my print settings, which is, you know, a little printer I have here, so that's kind of irrelevant. Um, and external plugins, none. So that's pretty much it. So you go, you hit package, and publication must be saved. Sure, please save. And then this is the next window that you have. So it's going to save this in a folder called, well, it should be 8.5 by 11 folder um, because I have a period in there. So that messes things up in the name of my document. That's why. But in the, at the bottom down here, I'm going to drop it on the desktop for demonstration. Uh, at the bottom down here, this is the important stuff. You want to make sure you copy all the fonts, you copy all the linked graphics, 
you update all the graphics in the links in, in, in the package that you will uh, that you will make on your desktop. You include uh, the IDML, which is InDesign markup language for all the versions of uh, InDesign. Include the PDF, and that's the preset. So we're going to go into the preset again, and again you have all those ones that are in brackets that are the presets, uh, the default, I should say, default presets from Adobe, and there's my CMYK press ready document right there. So it's going to package all this. It's going to um, download all the fonts and the graphics and then make a PDF for you right there. So we're just going to hit package and it's going to be on my desktop as soon as that's done. There you go, it's done. I'm going to hide InDesign, get to my folder, which is a folder right here. I have all my fonts um, downloaded right there, Blue Spirit, Gotham, Zap, Dingbat. Again, those fonts, if you're using them from Typekit, will not download uh, because Typekit basically you're renting fonts from Adobe. You're not, you do not own those fonts. And then there's all my links, all my images are in there. So it's perfectly fine. There you go. I can do a quick little preview of them just to make sure these are logos that are white so you don't see them. And there's my image on the cover right there. So perfect. I have my IDML document for older versions. And it's more like a library. You can see the size is 161 kilobyte. There's my InDesign document, 8.3 megabyte. And there's my PDF. So if I open the PDF, there's my document right here that has, um, as you can see, it has the crop marks right here. So I'll zoom in a little bit. See, it has those little crop marks right there, those lines, vertical and horizontal lines. These are my color bars at the top. Um, so it shows me basically the CMYK and then mixes off. Uh, it has also my registration mark right in the middle in the center there on the middle on the side. And then my uh, document information right here, the name, photo safari brochure, and I have my 11. And there's the date and time uh, of when this PDF was made. And my two pages are here, perfectly fine. The only thing is I don't see all my information that I have in my slug because it's on a layer and the layer is hidden. So if you're going to Acrobat Pro on the left hand side, you have this little layer icon right here. You click on that, you toggle thing, uh, the thing you open, you have right there, you have marks and bleeds. You have your artwork goes here, which is my layer. That's the name of my layer and I have my template, which is hidden. So I can click on that and there is all my information from the slug that we had. And I have also my guides, which are not visible anyway. But uh, and then you can also turn off, you know, marks and bleeds right there. So all those uh, crop marks, uh, color bar, etc., that can be turned off as well. So that's why you want to have those on the layer, um, because then the, the the printer can just you know turn those off and um, and output them or output them differently. And same thing with the template. You don't need to print that stuff. You can turn that on and off, right? So they, it's just basically for uh, basically like a dialogue window, basically dialogue layer for your printer. So that's it, it's ready to rock and roll. The preset is done. In this case, um, I wanna make sure, you know, for example, that uh, my PDF is uh, press ready and make sure that there's no other problems. So I can go into print production right here on the right-hand side. Um, if you don't have those icons, you can add them. Um, and then I have um, a few little things that you can do within Acrobat right there. So I have, you know, my ink manager right here. So everything is CMYK, just like I did earlier. I converted all those Pantone colors, those spot colors into CMYK. So it's all good. Um, I can fix hairlines in this case, not really necessary. Sometimes you have, um, if you're using a lot of vector graphics, you get those really fine hairlines everywhere in your, uh, in your PDF, and it's uh, it can be uh, it can be annoying, so you can fix that stuff. In this case, it's not that there's no problem. Um, you can pre-flight your document as well. Everything is you know everything is a okay. In in my case, I'm not going to bother. You can click also on output preview, which is an interesting uh, little process. Basically, it shows you. I'm going to push this on the side a little bit right there in the middle. Um, it shows you um, basically the ink density that you have um, at press. So if you're using a very rich blacks and lots of images that have a lot of colors, it might really saturate the paper. So you want to click on the bottom down here and see you click total area coverage right there. And it's, at, it's set at 300. So if you bring it down right there, you scroll down to 80, you can see that there's some highlighting 
of uh, in green uh, in your document and that tells you that there's a little bit too much ink at 280 percent which is rare it's a rare setting i set it up usually at 300 just to make sure and i have very very little stuff going on in me in my little uh, pyramid image that right there and then some very very small dots on the on the on the gate in that picture and really hardly anything going on so it's uh, it's it's very safe to print there's nothing going on it's just a tiny tiny little thing so there's there's very very little basically over coverage of ink on your paper so you're I'm, 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 I'm really happy with that so I can you know close that and and then uh, and then send that to print it'll be uh, it'll be uh, trouble free at press so this is pretty much how you set up uh, define and set up your uh, PDF presets, how you use it when you package a document, and, uh, and a quick uh, a quick overlook at uh, your document before you sign it out uh, in uh, Acrobat Pro.